Hello, my name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software. Today I want to show you just a little tip on SQL Compare. We've got some fun stuff that we do within the product and not everyone knows about all of them. So I've got a little project set up right now. I'm comparing between the movie management database and the not movie management database. Let's run a compare. Obviously it's going to register the data sources, register the database, map everything, and then run a full comparison. So we're going to close that out and we will see the comparison. Now what we have is two objects that are in both databases but different. We have one object that's in one database and one object that's in the other, and then 48 that are identical. Pretty straightforward stuff. But you'll notice we already have a little note here. It's a new thing. SQL Compare has automatically mapped columns in some tables. Those tables have an auto map icon next to them in the results below. That's great. We'll just dismiss that message. Let's first look and see that we have in this not movie management database, we have a thing called not agent. In the movie management database, we have a table called agent. Now, interestingly enough, these are probably, well, in this case, they are the same table. We can see that this one's an agent ID, agent name, details, address, and all that fun stuff. And we can see this other one is agent ID, agent name, and then some differences. So clearly, these two are probably the same thing, but um, we're going to have to do something to, to connect the two. Now let's go up here and take a look at the in both but different, and we'll notice that there's a slight difference on a constraint name. Okay, well, we can worry about that later. But the more important difference is right here, and we see the auto map right there. And it says the location table, location table. And the location details, you'll notice in this side, it says location details, and in this side, not location details. SQL Compare has already figured out that, hey, you know what? We can compare these two things. They're probably the same. The data type's the same. The name is close. The order and the table in which they're located is the, sa is the same. So we think they're the same, so we're going to auto-map them for you. Let's do this. Let's go and edit the project. And let's talk about the table mapping, because this is a really important extra little bit that you get. And so we can say that there is an unmapped table here. There's agent has not mapped to anything else. Let's expand this out a little bit so we can see it better and move this up. There we go. Now these tables are not mapped. One table is not mapped to the other. But let's go ahead and map them. So we're going to select one, we'll select the other, and we'll hit map. Now there are now mapped tables. Now so it's mapping, you can see right here, agent to not agent. We can even drill down on that and take a look to see what's going on. So it's matching agent name to agent, agent name to agent name, that makes sense. Social security number, social security number. And then it automatically figured out to map these two columns to each other. Now it could have been that they were not supposed to be mapped, in which case we can unmap them. But probably we need them, so let's go put them back in there. If they were not mapped, we could do this and we would map them. So you can actually connect up columns and table names that are not mapping correctly. Now, if we remember, we also had the other table up here. We can see it right up here at the top. Location. Let's just see what the location mapping did. You can always go in here and make adjustments if you want to. If you need to, if you wanted to say, you know what, this locations and locations detail are not uh, mapped, we can unmap them and make sure that these things are treated as separate columns if that's true. So if the automatic mapping picks things up inappropriately, you can undo it if you need to. But for the most part, it's going to catch things. It's going to help you out really, really nicely. Oops, probably shouldn't have left that like that, huh? My mistake. Mistakes happen. We'll just fix it real quick, right? We've mapped the two together, and now we'll close it out, and everything's cool. So we've now got all our tables mapped and all our comparisons mapped, and so now when we run our comparison, we're going to get a much cleaner data set. And you'll see that there is auto mapping going on, but we're okay with that. And now the only difference is the fact that we do have a change in a, a constraint name, um, mainly because it's going to two different tables. Um, that's something we can completely ignore because the table names are different between these two sources, but we don't care. Um, this is just the way these things are working. We're going to make this comparison, and all the comparison is going to work from here on out. If we had to deploy things, we could, um, but by and large, we are in a position now where we've able to map columns together in a way that we never could before. And that's a, a you know, it's not a new functionality, it's just a functionality that, that a lot of people don't see and haven't used very often. So that's it. Thanks for watching. My name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software.